playing of that familiar theme song, we go out to a familiar voice, that of Michael Snyder. He's in Hollywood. He's going to tell us about what movies you should and shouldn't see. Hello, Michael. Hi, Alex, and greetings all at the end of the line of this uh, little uh, netcast broadcast thingy. And we have got some movies for you. And uh, how appropriate that we're calling Hollywood because the first of these films is entitled Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and it's the ninth fe uh, feature film from director-screenwriter Quentin Tarantino, and probably my favorite from him since Jackie Brown. I mean, this is the guy that did Pulp Fiction and, and uh, Reservoir Dogs, and more recently stuff like Inglorious Bastards, but this movie just floored me. In addition to stunning art direction, costumes and makeup, and a note-perfect soundtrack and score that create a realer-than-real You Are There, 1969 in Los Angeles. The casting and the acting are fantastic, topped by career performances by Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. They play, respectively, a TV leading man on the decline and his stunt double turned right-hand man and drinking buddy. Um, it's the full-on dreamscape of the era with the dark underbelly that made me think of Nathaniel West's novel about L.A. in the 30s, The Day of the Locusts. Tarantino brings fictionalized versions of Hollywood types together with generally spot-on celebrity impersonations to show us the inner workings of the film and TV industry of the era, the way the stars played, and the impact of some brutal and horrifying events, particularly the uh, mad and murderous machinations of the Manson family. It plays out from the Hollywood Hills to the studio lots to Hollywood Boulevard to the Spawn Ranch to signature bars, restaurants, and lounges to the Playboy Mansion. And in fact, there's a sequence in the Playboy Mansion that just totally swept me up. Uh, there's a moment, I won't go into it, but I, I, I wanted it to keep going now as to how people are going to react to the latter half of the movie when things come to an acid-addled head. It's going to be a little divisive. I was totally on board for all 159 minutes. Yeah, it's that long, but it kept me riveted throughout. Again, Leo and Brad are tremendous. Margot Robbie is the perfect ephemeral waif as star-crossed starlet uh, on the rise, Sharon Tate. Plus, there are very cool and effective turns from Al Pacino as a savvy old school agent, Timothy Oliphant as an up and coming actor who's being groomed to kind of replace DiCaprio's character as everybody's favorite TV cowboy, uh, Margaret Qualley, Dakota Fanning, and yikes, Lena Dunham as some of Manson's harem, Damian Lewis as Steve McQueen, Kurt Russell, Emile Hirsch, Bruce Dern. Uh, it's, I, I love the film, okay, unabashedly. Moving on, let me say a little uh, something about Skin. Skin is a searing drama based on the true story of a real-life American neo-Nazi skinhead named Brian Pitbull Widner, who falls in love with a single mom and decides to change his life, which includes getting rid of his numerous extreme face and body tattoos. Eventually, he agrees to help the FBI go after the members of the vicious white surrealist group, surrealist supremacist group. Um, you know, he used to be in uh, this group, and he decides to basically turn on him, and the thugs don't take kindly to Pitbull's betrayal. The British actor Jamie Bell, who is so memorable and likable for his breakthrough role as the kid title character in Billy Elliot, uh, he was an adolescent, and he, he was equally charming in his early 30s as Bernie Taupin in the recent Elton John biopic Rocket Man. He's playing seriously against type and skin, and he does a phenomenal job as Pitbull. I mean, the guy can act. Um, he's almost unrecognizable. It's not just the tats. Plus, you get Vera Farmiga and Bill Camp, not too shabby, as the twisted racist married couple that runs the white supremacist family. Uh, and on the side of the angels, Mary Stuart Masterson as an FBI agent and Mike Luke Cage Coulter as a crusading black ex-gangster type who tracks down and turns neo-Nazis. It's written and directed by Guy Nativ, who keeps it real and tense and scary. Um, it's tough sledding, but man, I thought it was good. All right, The Mountain is a drama set in the off-kilter 
1950s America uh, envisioned somehow by director, co-writer Rick Alverson. Uh, let's just say that it was a weird ride. It uh, the movie concerns Andy, a young man played by Ty Sheridan, who after losing his mom goes to work as a photographer for a doctor who specializes in lobotomies and the therapy after lobotomy. Uh, the doc is played by Jeff Goldblum. I mean, need I say more? Uh, well, why not? The doctor and his newly appointed personal photographer are touring asylums where Andy records the lobotomies and their effect on the patients until they reach a mountain retreat in California. They're a weird new agey healer, played by the wild-eyed French actor Denis Levant, asks that his daughter be lobotomized. And of course, Andy's attracted to the girl, and that's where the conflict and lunacy start up. It certainly achieved a very specific mood. It's nice to see a filmmaker go off the beaten path, and, and I thought it was disturbing in places and pretty idiosyncratic, beautifully shot. Uh, both to its credit, um, it has uh, indulgent moments, and it also has really original moments, but I think that more than a few viewers are going to be put off. It's kind of relentlessly arty, deliberately paced, willfully bizarre, and, and it kind of eventually made me feel like I had just been lobotomized. Speaking of lobotomies, how about a worldwide lobotomy, uh, which we may need uh, after the events depicted in The Great Hack. It's a documentary about the data collecting and weaponizing done by the firm Cambridge Analytica that used Facebook as a platform for misinformation and manipulation in order to influence elections in various countries, including our own in 2016. As such, the movie, which introduces the various people behind Cambridge Analytica, it's also a post-1984 or chiller about how compromised we all are in general because of the rise of the digital tech and the concurrent clear and present danger of social media completely undermining personal privacy at all turns. Provocative to the point of being kind of unsettling, it's crucial for any thinking citizen to see a movie like this in order to understand the dangerous waters we've entered, directed by uh, Jahan Nujem and Kareem Amir, highly recommended The Great Hack, and I think you can probably catch it uh, via Netflix. Not probably. Not probably. You can catch it on Netflix. Uh, it, has, it was produced by Netflix. So, you know, uh, it is on Netflix, and uh, uh, I've seen about uh, 20 minutes of it and found it dull. Uh, Keep watching. Keep uh, watching. Well, I have other things to do. Anyway, okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, speaking of other things to do, what else are you watching? Uh, let's see. I binge watched Veronica Mars, which I thought was. Uh, I, I question whether it was any good until the end. It gets better and better, and it, it's a really. It's really. I had fun with it. You know. Are they re are they revisiting uh, the first thing that put Kristen Bell on the map, right? Yeah. yeah that's what, exactly. And okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, that's about it, I guess, Michael. Uh, tell them where they can find you. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Culture Blaster and on Facebook at Michael Snyder's Culture Blast page, and happy to be on GabNet. Okay, and there's more GabNet coming right up if you stay where you are, if you're listening to us 24-7. Otherwise, you can catch Michael every week on our on-demand section at GabNet.net. And there's more GabNet coming right up. Mm -hmm.